Hello and welcome to my review of the third book in the Thrawn trilogy. This one is called The Last Command. This one is uh, written again by Timothy Zahn, who did write the first two, uh, Heir to the Empire and Dark Force Rising. And things are a little bit different today. Uh, as you can obviously plainly see that there is no video, um, there's no visuals other than uh, what, what I'm going to put up as this picture uh on in in the video on youtube when you're when you're watching this um it's because yesterday i did this video and i recorded it all and in post-production i was editing it together and as it was processing once it was done processing i figured out that or i found out unfortunately that the audio and the video desynced and so in a fit of rage my and i admittedly stupidly deleted the video and so i'm doing this again today so yeah my my review of the last command is doing is going to be done today but before i get into the review i have to say a spoiler alert for this book uh there are some pretty big spoilers for legends and for thrawn in this book as far as you know the thrawn trilogy and so i will be going in, into those spoilers so consider yourselves warned on all things spoilers um also don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button uh it really helps me out and yeah it lets you know every time i put up a new video with that being said let's get into the review so dark force rising this one is the third book in the original Thrawn trilogy now this book it you it doesn't really pick up quite exactly right after the dark force rising the second book uh, left off this one is it it picks up a few it picks up sometime after the the end of the second one not immediately after and you still have all your main characters live uh, or not alive but you still have all your main characters who are coming back Mara Jade, Talon Card, you know Han, Luke, Leia, Chewie, Lando you have Thrawn, Paleon, his guy his uh his captain of the Chimera and you have Rook the the Nogri assassin that is <clears throat> acting as Thrawn's uh, bodyguard pretty much and personal assassin and this book is in my opinion it's good I I think that Heir to the Empire for me was was absolutely was absolutely great in my opinion I really really enjoyed that book and the second book uh, Dark Force Rising I feel like while it wasn't a setup book, it's definitely not a setup book. I feel like Dark Force Rising, um, it didn't. There was a lot of things did happen in it, but it wasn't enough to me to be uh, as good or on the same level as the first book, Heir to the Empire. And so, I think that in this trilogy, at least in my opinion, and um, this is only my opinion. I think that this trilogy kind of went from a great book in Heir to the Empire to a really good book in Dark Force Rising. And this one to me, this one um, is is good. I don't think it's kind of, I don't, I don't think it's a really, really good book. Um, there are some things that happen later on with the whole clone Luke and, and how powerful Sabayoth gets that happened later on in the video or the the book that uh to me kind of bring down uh, or at least it doesn't it doesn't quite live up to as how the other ones are the first two books had were more grounded i guess in the star wars universe whereas this one kind of takes it takes liberties and it, it's rightfully you know rightfully so timothy zahn had pretty much free reign back in the early 90s to write these books and they're great books but to me um, maybe it's just because I know how cloning works or I know of clones and how the Clone Wars uh, happened from the prequels and and the Clone Wars TV series and the whole uh, just just to me that um, the the things like the clone of Luke while handled very well uh, in Legends to me it didn't it it wasn't quite as good as of an ending as i hoped it would be but that's not taking away anything from the book it's just uh, i uh, this book is good i wish it would have been better let's get into some of the things that are happening in the book when we first pick up this book we know from the other from the previous book that 
Thrawn and the Empire have what they call the Dark Force, which is he has about 185 uh, dreadnoughts, old dreadnoughts, and he's manning them with clones. And this thing is the cloning um, takes a big, a uh, big role in this book, uh, which I I actually kind of enjoy that the way it talks about the Clone Wars, and this is pre the this is before the prequels happened, you know, early 90s, and so. You have very cool backstory given to cloning and the clones and the Clone Wars from Timothy Zahn. I think, honestly, I think it's it's better, in my opinion, than what we got in the prequels. Uh, and it's not saying that, the, you know, how the prequels handle the Clone Wars was bad. I actually kind of enjoy how they handle the, uh, the, the Clone Wars and the Clone Wars TV series. Um, but this one, Timothy Zahn gives such cool backstory as to how the Clone Wars were, you know, kind of in as as far as we know, the Clone Wars were a lot, a lot long, a lot more. How would I say this? The Clone Wars were a very long time ago in the galaxy of, you know, Star Wars. Mara J talks about them as if. They happened not 30 years before or 40 years before. It was almost like nobody was around when the Clone Wars happened. Now, you do get Mara J talking a little bit about um, the Emperor telling her or teaching her while she was his hand, kind of teaching her about the Clone Wars and, and, and kind of what happened and that it was not very good for the for the. Uh, the galaxy when they happen like they were it was a bad thing and that's kind of why when we pick up uh this story mara jade she is on coruscant because if you remember at the end of dark force rising she got injured in a space battle at the very end and the new republic took her to coruscant to go and um get her in a back to tank and help her uh, recover and so we pick up her with her on coruscant and her story, at least, she's helping the New Republic, not because, not necessarily because um, it's kind of her, it's not because she's like in league with the New Republic. It's more of she realizes that the Empire now has clones and she knows from the history of the galaxy that the Clone Wars was not very good for the galaxy. And so she aligns herself with the New Republic to try to stop the emperor or uh, the empire from cloning because another set of clone wars would absolutely devastate the galaxy at least that is what is hinted at in this book and i think that that's a really good i think it was a very cool way to have mar jade be on the good guys side uh you know i put good guys in in uh, quotation marks because you know the new republic in this book you have also you have luke and Luke's relationship with Mara Jade in this one uh, is very is very cool. I like that they Timothy Zahn didn't um I cuz we know from legends you know we know from legends that these two end up together. We know that they end up uh married and having kids and you know doing the whole new Jedi order and things like that. We know that and I like that Timothy Zahn back when he was writing this was like, "Hey, I'm going to set these two characters up together." And I'm going to make it, I'm going to hint at a possible, you know, love relationship for Luke with Mara Jade. And their relationship is so cool to me in that it doesn't happen. It doesn't happen even in a trilogy of books. They don't get together. At the end of this book, we have her and she's, you know, she's staying in contact with Luke because Luke wants her to be kind of the middleman for the New Republic, if they ever need to get information or need the services of the smugglers that Talon Card uh, rallies to his uh, to his aid, because Talon Card we get from this book more than any more than the first two books we get that Talon Card has he has like a syndicate almost not quite like not like a crime syndicate but more like a smuggler syndicate and he he has like an operation and he's in, in control and in charge of quite a few uh people in the galaxy not not like a lot but he has a a good amount of followers he has a good amount of ships other smugglers that he 
he's in effect like if you look at the clone wars um there's this character hondo onaka and he's also in um he's also in rebels but if you look at him in the clone wars tv series he has he has a full base like he has mul you know a good amount of people uh under his charge and that's kind of how telling card is in this and maybe they modeled Hondo Onaka off of him, or they modeled the character of Hondo Onaka off of Talon Card. But it's cool to see like someone like Talon Card, who is a smuggler, yet he still is in charge of people. He's a very powerful person uh, within the galaxy, uh, to a certain extent, of course. And it was very interesting to see someone like that having you know being in control of people and to me i thought the talent card was handled amazingly i want to see him in other things maybe i can read some more books uh or comic books where it has talent talent card in them because he's a very interesting character um he for the most part he is neutral but once he finds out that uh the empire is using clones he's like okay no this is bad Again, it going back to the whole backstory of the Clone Wars in this book, they set it up to where the Clone Wars was a bad thing, and everybody knows it. And so that's why Talon Card gets like his group of smugglers together, and he goes, uh, and he is on the side of the New Republic just because he does not want to see another Clone Wars go around, or he does not want something that devastating to happen to the galaxy again. Because the whole the whole rebellion and that Galactic Civil War that was devastating to the galaxy, and just to have another very immense battle like a Clone Wars to happen very closely after the Galactic Civil War everybody in this book makes it seem like look we had the galactic civil war we don't want another thing like that for a long time and so people that's why the smugglers are on the side of the new republic now han and leia they have a cool dynamic in this book um and in an interesting way of handling themselves because in this book in the last command this third book the twins are born uh jason and jayna jayna yeah, Jayana, Jayana, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, but and it was very cool to see Han as a father, and this is something that I I would like to see in the new canon because you know we know that in the new canon Han and Leia had uh, Ben Solo, and so I would actually like to see something like this happen in the new canon. But the way they handle it in this book is to where. Master Sabayoth, who is in the previous books, um, who's very powerful, by the way, Master Sabayoth, he wants Luke, he wants Leia, he wants the twins, and he wants Mara Jade all to come to him and pretty much serve him. He wants to be the new. He call he keeps on calling himself, you know, Jedi Master, but he's not a Jedi Master. He's absolutely dabbling in the dark side, and so it's very interesting to see him. Um, going after the twins and going after Leia and going after uh, Luke and Mara Jade like he is calling out to them through the force to come and find him and it was a very cool thing to see Han be like hey no no, no this is bad we cannot this cannot happen we got to protect our children like that is first and foremost in Han's um in his life in this book and that is something that we we never we've never seen before uh we've never seen a father figure no you know like han being a father is something that that is so cool because he's so protective of the kids yet he's still the smuggler he's still the scoundrel he's still the he's still the han solo that we all know but it's interesting and it's different to see him with some kids and having to worry about someone other than leia you know and chewy and and being it's 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 a very cool thing because uh at one point in the book Thrawn sends some assassins to come to Coruscant and try to uh, try to capture and pretty much kidnap Leia and the twins. And the way that they have they that play that scene plays out with with Han really worrying about his kids and his wife. It was a very cool thing to do. I thought that Han and and Leia have a great their their relationship continues to grow and i think that um i think that them two being 
them two being parents in this book is a very it's a new and it's an interesting look at those two characters now lando lando is lando's like a side character and that's that's totally understandable because he's always kind of been a side character in the star wars universe um but in this book he kind he even more than in the in the movies it seems like he's uh he's a side character in this book whether whereas in the first two books it seems like he was more he was more of a main character in those first two books in this one he's kind of just following han around and helping out han with whatever he's going through but in the first two like he had things to do for himself he was he was taking charge of things he was doing things on his own um, it's and it's not a bad thing to have someone like Lando be a side character because he's an amazing character. Uh, he's a great side character, and you know something can be said for Timothy Zahn being able to write all of our main characters and being able to write them all very well. I feel like in the new canon, we don't have we we literally do not have any new canon novels comics we don't we we don't have i mean we have like one comic i think where you have all of our main character characters together but i would just me personally i would like for them to in the new canon to write more books with all of our characters and i i sincerely enjoyed timothy zahn's writing and the way he wrote all of our main characters of Han, Luke, Leia, uh, Lando, and Chewie, and he wrote them all together, and it was so good because after Return of the Jedi, we've never gotten them all together again. After that, like, we had three movies, and that was it. And so to have more to have more stories um, to be told with all of our characters in, in them and all of our characters interacting with everybody else. It was such, it was such a joy because it's been, it's been such a long time for me personally, um, since I've had new characters with our main cast in the original trilogy. And it was so, it was so cool to read this and read this entire trilogy over three weeks and just be like, wow, this is great. I love this. Um, I thought it was, I thought it was really awesome. I like the bad guy. I mean, Thrawn, what else? Like Thrawn is Thrawn. There's a reason they brought him back into Rebels. And I think that Timothy Zahn does an amazing job of giving us all of our main characters and giving us a great villain and giving us some cool side characters like the Nogri in this book, the Nogri take revenge on Thrawn and the way Rook, like spoilers, the way Rook kills Thrawn, we don't even get the the description of how he kills it like how he kills Thrawn um we just get uh where uh Rook slashes the throat of of Peleon and then Peleon turns around sees Thrawn Thrawn sitting in his chair and he just has Rook's knife in his chest like and then Thrawn just smiles and said it was done so artistically it was so it was such a different way to go out like you have your other characters like the emperor and and tarkin and vader they all kind of went out well maybe not vader but the emperor and tarkin they went out in like in such a way as to they like it was not very set like this this the way thrawn went out was almost unsettling to me in that wow he was so calm he acknowledged that it was done artistically that's like that's something that thrawn would absolutely say but you have other characters like the emperor who got thrown down a shaft and explosion you know and tarkin literally blows up and it was just it's nice to have something different in your star wars universe you still have your main characters you still have a great villain but it was just nice to have a different kind of ending to a trilogy of stories that i thought was handled very well um now on the other hand let's talk about master sabayas because i this is where the book to me becomes not as good as the other two books and in the other two books master sabayoth was not powerful he was not more powerful than luke um in the other two books and in this book he takes a massive jump in his power which is very 
to me, it's it's what kind of made this book not as good as uh, I as the other ones, in my opinion, personally, because in this book, Master Sabaoth is own like he's not quite to the level of Emperor Palpatine, but they sure Timothy Zahn sure makes it seem like he's getting there, and I understand that you know before you had the prequels where it established the rules of the Clone Wars in that. You know, you can't clone Jedi. I understand that this was before that. And so you could clone Jedi in this. And it was just kind of crazy to me that Master Sabaoth would get so powerful, way more powerful than even Luke is in this, that he would become that powerful. And it doesn't like, and it was before, it was without, it was without help from someone else. I feel like if... If he would have, you know, if we would have had a holocron of somebody, you know, an ancient Sith or something, I feel like it was just kind of, it wasn't very, it wasn't explained very well how Master Sabayoth got as powerful as he's in this book, which kind of diminishes it to me because like, okay, so all you need to do is just, you know, meditate or, or whatever, and then you become extremely powerful in the dark side of the forest. That's not... That's not how it is, you know. Dark, uh, dark side users, they do not become powerful unless they have someone to teach them. That's why the rule of two is so important, you know. One to have the power, one to crave the power, and so it to me it was just a very. It wasn't, in my opinion, it wasn't very well handled. That he was, he just became very powerful, and it was just. It it almost seemed like it was overnight in that he was he was at one level and then in in dark force rising and and then in this book he just jumped a couple levels and that's one that's one of the things that um that made this book not as good in my opinion i feel like the climactic ending was fine but i would have uh it would have been better if you if timothy zahn would have maybe told us how master sabayoth was getting as powerful as he was uh, but that you know that's just a minor thing also the clone of luke skywalker and I, I enjoyed having a clone of Luke Skywalker. I thought it was very interesting. To me, um, the way they explained it where it he was cloned off of the hand that Luke lost in Bespin in Cloud City in Empire Strikes Back, I thought that was very cool. I thought it was very interesting that he would have the lightsaber that Luke lost in Cloud City. Now, obviously, we know in the new canon, somehow, Maz Kanata got uh, hold of that lightsaber, and now it's Rey's. And so I think that it was a very interesting thing to do as far as it absolutely works for the time period in which uh, it was written, you know, before before the prequels, before cloning was, you know, nailed down and how it all works. I think that it was a very cool choice by Timothy Zahn to do something like that. And it was really cool because it allowed Mara Jade to get the hatred of Luke Skywalker out of her. It allowed her to pretty much exercise that demon in her life and it allowed her to kill Luke Skywalker, but not really kill Luke Skywalker. And I uh, I thought that was a very cool device to have to use um, for Mara Jade and for her to get uh, essentially on the good side of of Luke Skywalker. And I, I, I personally did enjoy the ending. I just thought that, in my opinion, Master Sabayoth got a little bit too powerful too quickly. Uh, and that's that's just that's the main thing, in my opinion, that brings this book down from the other two i feel like if you would have given us maybe an explanation as to why he is so powerful or as to how he's being trained or maybe he has a sith holocron if some just give me a little nugget like that then i would be like okay that is why master sabayat is as powerful as he is and that's why he is gaining in power uh so um so quickly as to my verdict on this book i think it is I don't think it is a must read. I definitely think it is a read, though. Um, I think you should definitely pick this book up. Um, it's not quite a must read because, um, in my opinion, all the entire trilogy of the Heir to the Empire, uh, Dark Force Rising, and this one, The Last uh, Command, I feel like they all can serve as individual stories, but yet if you if there are other books, other canon books that you want to read, um, 
that have to do with um you know villains and things like that if there are other canon books that you want to read that you have not read before uh yet i feel like this one should not be at the top of your list to read after you're you're done with the canon books because that is the canon books are really in my opinion the canon books are really what you should be reading but if you've read all or most of the canon books like i have i feel like this one's not quite at the top this one maybe shouldn't be quite at the top of your list so i'm gonna say a read for my verdict i still very much enjoy the book but i feel like there are other legends books um that you should read before this one well there you go that is my review of the third book in the timothy zahn thron trilogy the last command but those are my opinions um so i'm gonna know what you think about this book so i need you to go into the comment section down below and tell me your thoughts down there tell me if you agree with me great if you disagree with me great let's have a discussion on this book let's have a discussion on star wars in general i'd love to have a discussion with any and all of you out there about star wars because i love it and uh i hope you do too um but yeah like I said, subscribe if you want to get notified every time I put up a new video. I try to put up a new Star Wars video every, you know, week. Um, this one is late, like I said, and there's no video because uh, my stupidity probably yesterday. Anyway, thank you for watching this video and may the force be with you.